Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Marco from Nice Label, um, and today we will, uh, together with my colleague, also Marco from Citizen, uh, we will um, show you um, some of the details, some of the things that you need to know about the new uh, food labeling regulations in the European Union. Um, we will present uh, some facts. Uh, and this is a this can be a very nice opportunity for for you our partners to uh, to get more customers to sell more printers more software and consumables in the food industry um so welcome from my side too and good morning to everyone that is joining the webinar okay good morning Thank you, Marco. Um, maybe just a little bit housekeeping in the beginning. Um, your questions are very welcome. Uh, please and please use the questions window in your GoToWebinar interface. Uh, you can ask questions at any time, uh, and we will answer them at the end, just to make uh, to make the presentation more fluent for everyone. Um, so. Today's agenda, um, we will look at why this is an opportunity for you, um, who are the customers, because there are quite different customer segments, it's, it, it is a very big opportunity, and also what are the requirements, so what are the things that you need to know uh, in order to get those customers, and then we will also present uh, how you can have how we can be together with citizen and nice label uh, your competitive advantage so how how you can uh, get more customers easier uh, than your competition uh, with this great combination um, I'm I hope most of you have heard about nice label I know some of you are our existing partners um, but let me just make a very, very quick uh, summary of what Nice Label is, who we are, and what do we do. Um, so we have we are based in Europe, in Slovenia. So we have more offices in uh, EMEA, in Germany, UK, Spain, France, uh, in North America, and also in China and Singapore. So we have global partner coverage in more than 100 countries. Um, we're here for. I think 22 years now the whole development is in Europe so you have more than 60 people to uh, to help you get more business in Europe so 60 people obviously development sales marketing technical support etc we have more than half a million customers globally uh, from the smallest kind of companies like small family-owned bakeries to large enterprise fortune 500 uh, customers uh, so we provide leading next generation technology platform so what we offer is not just some 15 years old technology that hasn't changed uh, you know for designing and printing barcodes uh, but we really do make products for the future that will can be your advantage in in the market so we offer tools for process improvement not just for label design uh, and printing drivers although we of course make our own printer drivers for more than 70 printer brands and we support more than 2500 different printer models uh, we base our development on best practices um, so our products are very robust very reliable um, open industry standards and uh, certifications from companies like Microsoft, SAP, Oracle, um, etc. So your you you and your customers are very safe uh, with using Nice Label. Um, Marco, I'll let you present uh, Citizen a little bit. Yes, just a short overview to Citizen Holding. Citizen Systems uh, belongs to Citizen Holding with uh, Citizen Watch. Citizen Machinery, Citizen Systems, so as with a label printer, POS printer, and mobile printer and photo printer, and Citizen Electronics. Citizen uh, was created in uh, 1930, and uh, last year we had a turnover of 2.3 billion of euro, and uh, all over the world we are around 90,000 employees. 
Okay. So this is citizen only. A very quick summary. Okay, um, let's go into the today's topic. So the, the topic is the new uh, regulation in the uh, European Union. It uh, steps into place on December 13th, uh, 2014. So the deadline is approximately three months away. Um, based on our experience, um, there are still many, many uh, customers, many uh, many companies in the food industry that, are, that will obviously be waiting until uh, the last minute for this uh, to be compliant with the new regulation. So there is still a very big uh, opportunity for you. Um, the point of the so what's important for all of us is that all labels, all food labels, will need to change. Um, so, the, the, mainly the regulation is, is important for information that's provided to consumers. So, on the packaging, what we see on the product on the shelves in the grocery store, but the implications go uh, far fur further to the complete supply chain. Um, and we'll, we'll see a couple of uh, examples later. So the, the new regulation is, is, you know, the point of the regulation is providing clear information to the consumers and this, um, re this presents a big challenge for manufacturers and retailers. Um, and the biggest challenge is highlighting the allergens in the list of ingredients. Um, this is the, you know, the whole regulation has Quite, it's quite long, it has many articles, but this is the one that presents the biggest challenge uh, for the food producers and on, at the same time it's, it's, a, it's a good opportunity for, uh, for us and for all, the, uh, all our partners uh, to, present, to make solutions for this market. Um, one of the challenges is the manufacturers are, are, they don't know all the details about the regulations and they're not aware of all the technical solutions for these challenges. Um, and this is, I believe, one of the main reasons why many of them have not incorporated the new, the new labeling uh, standards uh, in the European Union. Um, so in this presentation, we will focus on the, on the whole picture, on the, on the, main changes in the food uh, labeling um, so, so that you know what to present to your customers and we will focus on this on the hardest part uh, uh, for producers to comply which is labeling of allergen ingredients uh, in the list of ingredients. Um, a little bit of who are your uh, target customers. Um, we call this on-demand applications, uh, so like deli stores, bakeries, catering companies, so everybody who makes um, like fresh sandwiches um, and uh, maybe biscuits and, and bread and other products um, because they, you know, they print on-demand when, when those uh, products are made. Um, for bigger manufacturers, um, they, they have maybe other challenges because they would print the food information on the packaging, uh, but they, they have problems in the, in the warehouse, in the receiving goods, uh, because they need to very clearly label everything. Uh, they want to improve their processes to lower the cost, and the biggest thing for them is minimizing the risk. Many companies have, you know, they, they, they may be producing some biscuits or something like that, and they would have peanuts as ingredients maybe for some other products. And what's important for them is that these, every box that contains peanuts is, is labeled very clearly that this is an allergen ingredient because they need to store them in a special warehouse. So they should not get in contact with other non-allergen ingredients. Um, so you, you, you could find some huge warning labels that this is an allergen uh, ingredient and uh, these companies really want, uh, want to make sure that the allergen and non-allergen ingredients don't get mixed in, in the process or even in the warehouse. 
Um, for retailers, this is also a challenge. Um, in some smaller countries, um, you know, descriptions on the on the packaging is not in the local language simply because there's no there's no space. Um, I know of a German retailer who who sells in eight countries, I think, in Central and Eastern Europe, and you know they can't put all the descriptions in all eight languages um, uh, on on the packaging. So what they need to do is in every of the non-German countries, they need to put special labels on the packaging. So this is this is done um, in each country, and it's because they have many different products. It's it's very complicated. Uh, just as an example, there is a French retailer here in Slovenia. They have contacted us because they have 300,000 label templates as Word documents, and now the whole all these labels need to change. Um, we, we, were, we were shocked. Um, and uh, I want to show you later uh, how, you can make, how you can make a system where even with such changes you don't need to change 300,000 label templates. You maybe change one or maybe five um, and everything else uh, still works. Uh, so we can make a very, very simple a solution for these customers. So these are the these are the kind of customers you want. You may probably want to contact um, as soon as possible because they will need to find a solution in the next three months if they haven't done it yet. A little bit about the the label uh, requirements. So what is required on all the labels? what's in so in the regulation so here on the screen you can you can see the um, uh, an example of such a label so what are the important things that have to be uh, on the label name of the food obviously so this is apple strudel uh, the list of ingredients and now this the big change is any ingredient or processing aid uh, that is potentially allergen needs to be needs to be highlighted here in the list of ingredients so in on the previous regulation stated that you had to uh, list all allergen ingredients uh, separately so let me just show you maybe the next slide so here you can see how it was before you had the list of ingredients and then you have the list of allergen ingredients so this was fairly simple to make uh, and now the point is that you need to provide this information within the list of all the ingredients and you need to highlight them. The regulation doesn't say how you should highlight them. Uh, you can bold them, you can, you can make some background color, uh, but they need to be clearly highlighted. Um, some of the other things that are, that are required on, on the label um, also, the quantity of certain ingredients uh, or categories of ingredients. So, your customers should probably be aware of which of these have to be. You know, they they have to say how much I don't know water is is in that product. Um, then 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 um, net quantity of the food. I don't know if I mentioned the special storage conditions, so if it needs to be refrigerated or not. So net quantity is important. Um, the best before or use by date. Um, the, uh, the name of the business and the address. So who, who's the manufacturer and also their address. This needs to be on every label. Uh, for some items like meat products, the country of origin needs to be uh, also on the label um, and also instruction for use so if, if it needs to be cooked uh, or otherwise processed before uh, before eating. Um, for alcoholic beverages more than 1.2 percent of volume of alcohol it also needs to state the, uh, the volume of alcohol and nutrition declaration um, but that that comes into place in uh, 2016, so they have two years more to provide nutrition declaration. So these are the mandatory elements on, on every label. 
Um, and again, just so until until 13th of December, they can still use the old labels um, with with the old regulation from 13th of December. Uh, they need to. They will need to change all uh, all labels. They can do it before, um, because mostly the new regulation and the old one uh, don't have any really points where they could clash. Um, some minor ones, but uh, your customers can begin using the new labels already, so it's not a problem. Um, the 14 food allergen groups um, are listed here on the on the slide I, I won't read them uh, to you uh, you can have your if so if you're not uh, from an English speaking country uh, you can find all these uh, the translated documents on the on the European Union website there is a hyperlink in in the bottom of this slide but we will send this to you uh, later so you don't need to you don't need to copy it uh, right now um, so, just for your information, all these groups groups of food need to be to be highlighted, even if they are not present in the uh, in the final product, but they were just used somewhere in the process. They need to be highlighted. Um, some uh, maybe some more hints, you know, some questions that your customers may ask. Um, so, if the allergen is just part of the word, so here we have an example for uh, for milk powder. How how would you need to um, uh, to highlight it? So, the the recommended way is to always highlight just the allergen part of the word. So here we have we have a German uh, example, milk pulver. Um, or it's milk pulver perhaps um, <laughs> excuse me for to everyone in Germany uh, it is recommended uh, to only highlight the word milk uh, but it is allowed also to uh, to highlight the whole word uh, in case of uh, French or Italian this is putre de lait or latte in polvere uh, only the word uh, representing milk so le or latte needs to be uh, needs to be highlighted not the uh, the powder part of the word um, and another important um, aspect so an another imp important requirement is the regulation states the minimum there the, the point is the so that the consumers can read uh, all the instructions uh, so they specify the the f they don't specify the font, but they specify the minimum size of the lowercase letter X. It should be 1.2 millimeter. So this depends this depends on the on the font obviously. So font size six is usually a little bit too small, like in case of uh, Arial. Uh, so it needs to be 1.2 millimeter X needs to be 1.2 millimeter high. Um, so this um, this requires a pretty high quality printer. So uh, Marco will uh, will probably talk more about this. So it's a good idea to use a 300 DPI printer. Uh, this depends obviously on the size of the label uh, that you have. But very often food labels or the packaging is very small. Uh, so you are quite uh, quite limited, um, and maybe also this. In case of nice label, uh, you can use uh, rich text objects, and you can because the the problem is typically the size of the label. It's the space that you have on the label, and you can put the rich text object, and you can set it up in a way that it will it will. Uh, set the font size automatically you know just to save you space and and checking uh, and having you don't you won't need to have hundred hundred uh, different label templates but you can have just one template for all the different labels and it will uh, adjust the font size to completely fit the uh, the area that you that you assigned and you can also limit the minimum size the minimum font uh, a size so you can say 
okay? Minimize the font as much as you can, but not uh, to less than seven points, uh, because in that case you you would you would not be compliant with the regulation. Okay, um, a little bit about the solutions uh, uh, that that we offer. So the the best solution is dynamic text formatting. Uh, yeah, maybe before I go into solution, I'll just shortly state the, the challenge. Many of the food companies have, you know, they have different products. They could have hundreds or even thousands of different products. Even if it's just a small family-owned bakery, they would make, I don't know, maybe 30 sorts of different biscuits, and they would make bread, bread in, I don't know, 10 sorts, etc., etc. Uh, so, if if you create a label for each product, you 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 know you end up with a system that is very difficult to maintain. You risk somebody printing the wrong label when when they are printing, and you know this can be this can be a huge problem if especially if you know somebody who's allergic to peanuts and then gets gets a wrong label. Uh, you know you get in trouble. Um, so the best practice is to minimize the number of different label templates and to have the the list of ingredients and other label data in a database. Now this doesn't need to be very fancy. Uh, you know, it can be just a simple Excel sheet. Uh, for small companies, bigger companies usually have some, you know, real database systems, ERPs and, and, and so on. Um, but we really, really recommend for every this kind of of customer, uh, you know, have one template and then have the complete product list in 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 a database, because what can happen is you know you change the address or the regulation changes like in this case, and then you need to open all your different labels, and make changes to all these existing labels, whereas if you have a database, you only change it once and it's valid everywhere. The next thing is for highlighting in ingredients. If, if companies have their labels now in Word, they need to open all of them and make sure they highlight all of them, whereas with a nice label solution, you only have the list of allergen ingredients in one table so again, this can be a simple Excel sheet and uh, the product data in another one, a nice label does the highlighting for you. You don't need to think about, you don't need to open every label. Before it gets printed, it gets reformatted. So here what you see on the screen is a, a such an example of such a printing form. So the user can see uh, the list of all the products they can you know they can manually select them uh, or scan a barcode or something like that um, and what we see more and more in in production environments is using a touch screen so you can have you know with the big uh, print button and everything is a little bit bigger so you really streamline the whole production process and you can make it very uh, very convenient for the user um, so that's it. So, you know, in the end, it's a very simple solution, and you can imagine uh, that company having 300,000 label formats in in Word documents. Uh, how much time they need just to find the right template when they want to print, uh, or if they had something like this, uh, where they would just scan uh, scan a barcode and uh, labels would start printing. Um, so. So this is, I mean, it's one, one thing if the customer already, if they already have a database, then this is a very simple solution because, uh, you know, it's even easier uh, because all you, they need to add is, is a table with the list of allergen ingredients and all the labels are, you know, you can be compliant in, in, in a matter of hours and it doesn't cost a lot. Um, so if they already have um, a, a database with uh, with uh, with product data. They don't need to change anything. They don't need to bold every wheat or rye or peanuts or whatever in that database. The database stays the same, 
a nice label checks another database that has a list of allergens and dynamically highlights the allergen ingredients before printing. So you, you can, you know, you can you can update the, just the allergens database and all the labels from that moment on. Once you add a, uh, an ingredient to that database, it will be highlighted. So even if the regulation changes, uh, you're you're still safe, and you don't need to you don't need to change all all the labels. So the maintenance for the future is a lot easier uh, with with nice label. Um, so what are the, the the benefits? Is the minimum effort to change and change to current procedures. If they don't have a good system, then you know they are improving for the better. So so change change is good. But if they already have a database, then they don't need to change almost anything. So it's very uh, it's a non-disruptive uh, procedure. Um, so it's very easy to implement and maintain. This is really, you know, sometimes minutes, but in reality, it's it's maybe a, just a few hours. Uh, but compared to opening all the different word files, um, you know, it can take months for that company to um, to change everything, and they still risk uh, errors. And the the whole maintenance for the future is very simple because. You may you may only have one label template, or maybe you have a few label templates, but that's a lot better than a hundred uh, or hundreds of labels uh, label templates. The opportunity for you is also to you know to try to modernize the production process, so you can really you can really improve efficiency uh, uh, at your customers. You can improve their productivity and uh, minimize the the total cost of of the production. Um, and make it future proof and get get the customers uh, for the long run so they will keep buying from you um what we see what we see more and more is the use of touch screens uh, as i mentioned already before in the in the production so we see this really as a best practice um, because uh, you know they don't break down as much as, as a mouse or a keyboard, um, the, it's a lot easier for the user, and you can make you, you, with our PowerForms product you can design the user interface on your own, no programming uh, knowledge required, and you really streamline the whole production process. So very often in food industry, uh, they have seasonal workers. Uh, very often from abroad that they don't speak the language so and instead of I don't know like let me just give an example uh, like horse meat you know they don't need to know the word horse but if you put a picture of the horse on on the user interface they will know exactly what it is um, uh, so you have better process uh, run everything runs faster and you minimize the uh, the risk of errors um, and also, you minimize the downtime. Um, just just a few more examples. So, so these are all these examples that I'm showing you. These these were all made by our, by our partners. So this was all made. This was not made by us. There's zero programming code from our developers in here. This is these applications are really you know just point and click uh, to to create them. Um, I won't go into details how you do it right now, but we we will be happy to uh, to show you um, to show you how it's done. Um, so I I mentioned different kinds of customers. Many of them have very advanced processes, typically bigger companies. Uh, smaller companies tend to have either no software at all, or they wouldn't have a database and they would print from Word, uh, etc. This is where you can help them, and where we can help you. Um, if you know, if you're not sure how it's done, please come to us, and we will help you. You know, recommend the best solution. We'll help you help you design the labels. We'll help you design those printing forms, um, and we'll also so we can do it for you, or we can show you how to do it, and then you can get 
uh, get more customers on your own uh, if you want. Um, the good thing here is that you can increase your sales uh, by, you know, by selling a complete solution. So you can sell citizen printers, nice label software, uh, labels and ribbons, uh, or any other consumables. You can sell touch screens, etc., and they will keep getting back to you for consumables. Um, and we will be very happy to uh, to help you uh, with it. Okay, um, so this is a quick overview from uh, from my side. I will let uh, Marco take over uh, for the uh, for the printers. Marco, stage is yours. <laughs> yes, thank you, Marco. Just a short um, overview that you already introduced about the new regulation. So why is so important to highlight the ingredients in the labels? Because it's the only way to prevent and protect the allergic customers for this kind of uh, allergic ingredients. And Citizen Printers guarantees to your customer to print really high quality of labels for food and for drinks. So it's really, really important and the quality of the printing. Can we? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Thanks. <laughs> so um, basically we can provide to your customer every printer for every printing volume. We can start from low to medium volume. So for all the manufacturers that are not uh, printing um, thousands of labels per day, but hundreds of labels per day, who needs uh, really high performance and high reliability and quality, such as uh, small bakeries, uh, breweries, uh, or catering. Uh, why is it important? Because they can choose between the resolution, so we have a lower resolution, lower resolution with 200 dpi, and higher with 300 dpi, for example, the CLS 3631, because it's uh, why it's so important to have a high resolution, because you have the possibility to print, uh, as Marco said before, small labels. For example, if you need a barcode in a small label or even a QR code that needs to be printing in really high quality and to be uh, to be scanned uh, fast, and then if you want to have the same quality printer, you can, but with a lower resolution, you can switch to the CLS five to one or six to one. That even they guarantee, we guarantee the same quality with the fast printing and really really high reliability and hundreds of levels per day, but with a lower um, resolution. So basically, um, this application for low and uh, medium printing volume uh, for that um, businesses that are using printing on demand, as Marco anticipated. So uh, what they they produce the food that they the day and then can sell the the food in the same day. So then we can switch to the medium to the high volume printing this print the CLS 700 series is more focused on really high volume printing for all the is more focused on industrial industrial uh, production for all the companies that they want to wor work and and uh, sell their food in the European market or even outside the European market because even if they sell food um, outside the European countries, they have to use the regulation. So for example, we, we, can, uh, we can use the CLS 700 even if with 300 DPI's and 200 DPI's. Same reason for, for the resolutions for who needs for if your customer needs really uh, precision barcodes or QR codes 
and uh, some logos, logos, for example, and they have to print thousands of labels per per day. The CLS, CLS 700 series is more focused on that market side. So also for we can use for this printer for the companies that are receiving food, working on this food, on uh, for example drinkings. So prepare breweries, beers, and that they are selling outside their countries. So which are the key benefits of our printer for the, um, the new regulation? Citizen can provide to your customers, as I said before, the perfect printer for every single uh, printer volume and needs. So uh, as I said, we can uh, meet your customer needs with 200 dpi with a so small uh, volume printing until the 300 dpi with a really fast printing out and high volume printing with the CLS 700 series. Then also Citizen guarantees to your customer the high quality of the products. So for example the CLS 700 series guarantees uh, with a full metal um, housing, so it's really, really uh, robust to, to use in an industrial environment. And also the quality of the um, mechanism is really, um, really high, it guarantees a you a lot of reliability. And also um, the 300 dp until the 300 dpi we can print uh, and highlight the um, the ingredients and print perfect barcodes even with a small labels. We can. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Just waiting. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, for this uh, uh, very very quick introduction. Um, so to summarize and not uh, not to spend even more of your time, uh, what are the important things? Uh, the deadline is December 13th this year. Uh, customers can switch immediately. They can switch before, uh, but after 13th of December, their labels will need to be different than what they are now if they still want to sell their products. Uh, to consumers, um, and it's it's not just about the whole regulation does not affect just the end product that we see in the grocery stores, but also in the supply chain. Uh, the biggest challenge for your customers is going to be highlighting the allergen ingredients within the list, um, and with Nice Label and Citizen, you can get a great solution that requires minimum changes to their existing process. It can improve their existing process a lot um, and it's, it will be easy to maintain uh, for whatever the future brings. Um, what I would recommend to, uh, to all of you, um, you can go to nicelabel.com and download NiceLabel um, to, if, you, if you haven't done so yet. Uh, then on our uh, pages which are only available to our partners, so nicelabel.com slash partners slash allergens, you can download the complete solution with the, uh, with the sample label that you saw in this presentation and also the forum for printing, so you can use that one for demo purposes. You can change the label as much as you want to, to adapt it um, however you, uh, you need. Uh, we have information for customers on the website. Um, maybe I can I could also open it. Uh, NiceLabel.com slash allergens um, is is the redirect link. We will send you the this PowerPoint um, that you saw today, um, and we will be very happy to hear your feedback. Or if you need any help, um, you know, I understand some of you may not be NiceLabel users uh, yet. Uh, but we will we will be happy to um, to provide guidance uh, to train you and you know offer some additional partner benefits uh, that we didn't mention here. 
Um, so it's this is an opportunity uh, for you to sell more printers, more software, more consumables. Um, and here at this stage, I would uh, say thank you, and maybe we can uh, we can check if there are some if there are some questions. Let me see. Mm. Uh -huh, we have four questions. Um, do you have a list of all the requirements, mandatory and uh, recommended? Um, yeah, this was this was just just an overview. Um, just to get really all the requirements, uh, you would need to go to you would need to check the uh, the regulation. Let me excuse me. Let me just try to find. I had this. Um, okay. I, uh, I think I hope you can you can see my uh, my browser window. Uh, so this is the uh, we will send you the link to this website. So here you can see the uh, this new regulation in in all the different languages. So here I have it in English, uh, but you can you know it's in Greek or Slovenian or whatever language wherever you're from. Um, so th this is where all the all the requirements are. Um, next question. Uh -huh. Considering the volume, which should be large enough, why should somebody use the 300 DPI printer and not produce the label in a printing house and print only the best before field? Um, I think I can answer this one as well. Um, you know, yeah, it, it depends on the volume. If you very often uh, you would print on the packaging and, you know, not even use the thermal printer. But I think if you print on demand, um, then then it doesn't make that much sense to, to outsource printing and just print a little bit you know, the best before field. The problem is going to be because the space for the label is going to be very small. Um, so in the end, you may end up printing just also the best before field with a 300 DPI printer. Um, that would be, um, that would be my answer. Um, there's a question if there's an Android version of Nice Label. Um, you can you know, nice label is still used. Main, well, a lot of it is used for designing uh, and printing and designing on 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 phone or tablets. That would that would be very difficult. So so we don't do that. Uh, but if you're interested in starting printing from an Android-based uh, device, uh, you can contact us and we'll. Uh, well, well, we'll make this a separate conversation, but right now we don't have uh, we don't have a public uh, product uh, for Android. Um, any more any more questions? Okay, I, I don't see anything more. Of course, if you do have more questions uh, later, we will be very happy uh, 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 to answer them. Uh, Marco, I don't know if you if you have anything to. Uh... Oh yeah, the no. the, 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 e the email address. Um, so hang on, let me just show you the. So the uh, Marcos email address is here. You should be able to see it on on the screen. Uh, for nice label related questions, uh, just send them to sales at nicelabel.com uh, and or to marketing at nicelabel.com. Um, so, and we will it will be either me or somebody else uh, providing the answers. Sorry, Marco. Back to you. <laughs> no, no. I would like to say it. if they have other questions, you say please contact me in the address there, Marco at citizenminuseurope.com, and uh, was really a pleasure to meet all of them for this first uh, webinar. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you again also from uh, from my side to everyone. Uh, you will receive a follow-up email from uh, from us. Uh, and it will include link, all the links that you need and also all our email addresses where you can, uh, you can get more information if necessary. Uh, and thank you again for joining and I hope to, to see you again soon at some, uh, some other presentation.